Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. I was informed by a member of the community about this news coming to us from Seeking Alpha. Some trouble in Mexico. The second largest silver mine has suspended operations. What will this do to impact the price of silver? Well, let's explore and let's take a look and see. Yes, this is a very troubling news in a way, but it looks like that a mine has suspended operations for now. And just a little more than a week after the mighty Newmont Gold Corp merger was finalized, the company suspended operations of its largest gold silver mine in Mexico. The Penasquito mine, uh, which produced more than 500,000 ounces of gold and 25 million ounces of silver in a single year, has been dealing with a blockade of its operations since March 27th. The blockade was started due to issues with the local community in regards to water supply concerns and problems with a trucking contractor. However, the protests by the local community over water rights have been going on ever since the Penasquito mine started operations in 2010. According to the article Gold Corp, has using excessive excessive water at Penasquito mine critics uh, researched by McGill Research Group reported that the uh, Penasquito mine was using three times the amount of water than originally agreed upon. Furthermore, the large open pit gold and silver mine located in the state of Zacatecas. Uh, was also consuming three times the amount of water supplied to the entire city of Zacatecas, which has a population of 129,000. To get an idea of the amount of water consumed by the Penasquito mine, uh, the author looked into the data from Gold Corp's most recent sustainability report. In 2017, the Penasquito mine withdrew a staggering 7.9 billion gallons of water to supply its operations for the year. Of the total amount, 93% came from groundwater. That is a lot of water for sure. It will be interesting to see, see how long it takes for the suspension to end. However, with the election of the new president, AML, AMLO of Mexico, Andreas Manuel Lopez Obrador, large foreign mining companies in Mexico may find it increasingly challenging to get their way as they have in the past, with the help of pro-mining leaders. Regardless, the Penasquito mine produced the second largest amount of silver in Mexico last year. Look at that. Um, and so if that comes offline, it's going to be a pretty big hit, at least for the production of silver coming out of Mexico. While Newmont Gold Corp owns the second largest silver producer um, in Mexico, Fresnillo PLC runs the other top three primary silver mines. Uh, so Quito, Fresnillo, and San Julian. With the suspension of mining operations at Penasquito, that's a potential loss of 18 to 20 million ounces of silver a year. The real problem at Penasquito comes down to the massive amount of water it consumes in pro to process the enormous amount of ore it mines. For example, the Penasquito mine, which produced 18.3 million ounces of silver in 2018, processed a stunning 35.2 million ounces of ore to get that silver. Wow. Yes, it's true that the Penasquito uh, mine is mainly a gold producer, but it also provides a great deal of silver. If we compare the amount of processed ore by the top silver producers in Mexico, it's no wonder why the locals are concerned about the local water supply being consumed by Penasquito. So here we see in this in this graph the largest silver producers and amount of processed ore in 2018. Look at that. And uh, Penasquito is way up there in the amount of tonnage in the ore compared to um, the other places. Crazy. Wow. Um, so they produced... 35.2 million tons compared to the other primary silver miners in the group, 11.8 million tons. 
Thus, the pennies keep to mine process three times more ore to supply six times less the silver from the other primary silver miners. Well, it makes you wonder if that's the case that, you know, how they can stay in business or is it uh, economically viable to do so considering how much they have to process. The Penasquitos average gold yield last year was a minuscule 0.24 grams a ton and the silver yield was only 16 grams per ton. Compare that to the average gold yield of the yield of the top four gold miners at 1.26 grams per ton in 2017, and the top eight silver miner average of 233 grams per ton, which means that Penasquillo mine has to move five times the amount of ore to produce the same amount of gold as the top four gold miners, and 15 times more ore than the top eight silver miners. Penasquillo is not only a water hog, but it also consumes a great deal of energy to produce its gold, silver, and base metals. According to the data for 2017, the Penasquito mine produced less than a fifth of Gold Corp's total gold production, uh, but it used 60% of the company's total energy consumption, and that ratio is likely worse for 2018 when they published the data as Penasquito's gold production in 2018 represented only 12% of the company's total production. So it's no surprise that the mine has been plagued with protests and blockades for years. It'll be interesting to see how the future unfolds for Penasquito with the new anti-mining president, AML, AMLO, now running the show. Either way, these types of super large open pit mines will soon be extinct when global oil production peaks and declines. And uh, so it's interesting. Um, and... More likely, this to be the first one to 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 dry up and go away. And really, it seems it seems like it's more of a burden uh, than a benefit, not only because of the environmental and economic factors, uh, but be, just because of the costs involved in in processing all that ore. Yeah, <clears throat> and if you look back up at this chart here, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say, you know what? Yes, it's producing a lot of silver. The second in Mexico, when you take into account all these other mines and everything else that's going on, and the fact that it has been down since March, I think is set up here, since March 27th, it's had little to no effect on the price, and I don't think it will have much of an effect going forward. Because um, my guess is probably they are more likely keeping that silver um, at these prices and waiting for and hedging their bets that silver is going to go up and maybe waiting to sell it then. I don't know, though. It's That's just a guess. But regardless, I believe that um, it's not going to have that much of an effect on price. And uh, who knows? They may be weighing their options to see whether or not it's worth keeping. The only reason why it's worth keeping is because of the gold it produces. But when you take a look at the ore and the like that's discovered there, my guess is probably it will... Uh, fall to the wayside. So there you have it. Very interesting story. And uh, uh, it's going to be fascinating to see how these mines operate and how they adapt, not only to peak oil, but to also dwindling supplies, um, on, you know, in the open pit areas. Um, and new technologies that may come, that may surmise and find ways to discover and extract gold and silver from the ground. Those are all the different factors that should come into play and uh, and what their overall all-in mining costs are as we proceed in the coming years. Have we reached peak gold production? Are we near peak silver production? Who knows? Either way, we know there's, in the, I mean, the coming five to ten years, there's going to be a lot that's going to be coming out of the ground. And though it may be less potentially, possibly, than right now or a few years ago, it's still a lot more than even were being produced, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And meeting that demand, I feel, will probably not be enough of a problem to be that concerned about in the foreseeable, foreseeable future. Uh, regardless, we still hold these precious metals to be self-evident, and that is really what it's about. Uh, they are here to protect us against times of economic instability and strife. And uh, that's what they're there for. And we'll continue to accumulate them and hold them. So post your thoughts below. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching. 
and encourage you to please rate, comment, share, and subscribe.